Check, check. All right, all praises to the Most High. Brothers and sisters, all praises to the Most High. Uh, let's thank the Lord for another Sabbath day. For those of you tuning in, uh, get your pens and papers out. Um, take notes. Take good notes. Um, the title of the class is The Simplicity of Saul and the Cruelty of Cain. The Simplicity of Saul and the Cruelty of Cain. All right, we want to examine the lives of our forefathers, uh, whether it was bad, good, or ugly, and um, take the good from it, glean from it, and make sure we apply um, everything that we read about uh, to our lives, all right? So today we're going to examine the walk of Saul, uh, the walk of David, of course. Can't speak, with, can't speak about Saul unless you speak about David. And we're also going to look at Cain and Abel as well. Okay, let's get 2 Timothy's chapter 2, verse 20. 2 Timothy's chapter 2 and verse 20. Go ahead. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. So this great house is talking about the whole nation of Israel. Come on. But also of wood mm -hmm. and of the and of earth. It said, but also of wood and earth. So inside of this house, you have gold and silver. Okay. And we also have wood and of earth. Go ahead. And some to honor. And some to honor. Some vessels are to honor. That would be the gold and silver, of course. Come on. And some to dishonor. And some to dishonor. Okay. That would be the wood and of earth. Those are those who fall into the category of two thirds. All right. Because like like we always read, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Each and every one of us is called. But our works in the truth, our faith, our endurance into the end, that's going to show you whether if you're chosen or not. What are you made of? Are you made of gold, silver, wood or earth? Read on. If a man, therefore, purge himself from these. If a man, therefore, purge himself from these. These what? The impurities. Get second. Um, get me Sirach chapter two. If a man, therefore, purge himself from these. Let's examine that for a second. Let's go to Sirach chapter two. Read. Uh, yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. For gold is tried in the fire. So gold is tried in the fire in order to get that nice shiny gold that Jake likes to wear. You know, those medallions that we like to put on our necks in order for it to come to that state, come to that fruition. There's something that you got to do to that gold. You got to put it in the fire. OK, and this is what this is a similitude of the trials that we go through in the truth. The afflictions that we catch, okay? The sin that we have to overcome, all right? Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. and acceptable men mm -hmm. in the furnace of adversity. So what makes us acceptable? We got to go through stuff. God says, acceptable men in the face, in the face of adversity. Go back to 2 Timothy's chapter 2 and you left off at verse 21 go ahead second timothy chapter 2 verse 21 mm -hmm. if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor god says if you purge yourself of these impurities you're going to be a vessel unto honor go ahead sanctify mm -hmm. and meet for the master's use and write for the master's use what makes you right for the master's use you got to purge yourself from sin okay through what application of god's laws you got to walk an obedient lifestyle you must adhere to the commandments of god there's no other way into the kingdom of heaven there's no other way there's no trick there's no magic scripture there's only one way into the kingdom of heaven and that's keeping the commandments of god read and prepared unto every good work and prepared unto every bad work unto every good work and prepared unto every good work give me romans 15 now verse 4 so all praises to the most high in these times brothers and sisters we have a standard to go by we have a, a a constitution to make reference to which is the records of our forefathers the bible so we're not just winging it 
If you find yourself winging it, you're in the wrong spirit. We have examples to go by. What did our forefathers do that was good and that was bad? So you take the good, apply it to yourselves, the bad you avoid. You say, you know what, I'm not gonna do this. This is what Saul did, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, this is what David did, okay, I like that. The good that David did, we gonna do. The bad that he did, you're gonna avoid. That's the, that's the, um, the advantage, that's the advantage that we have of having these scriptures. We're not left to our own opinion, our own thoughts, what he said, what she said, what we learned in school, these role models that many of, of uh, that, the, that they have in the world that we grew up looking up to. Nah, we got the scriptures right here. All right. Um, give me Romans 15 and verse four. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. But they're only written for our learning if you would open the scriptures and read. That's why Christ said something heavy in Revelation. Get me that Revelation. I believe it's in verse three. Let's get that real quick. Yeah. Blessed is he. Go ahead. Revelation chapter one, verse three. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that readeth. So the things written aforetime was written for our learning if we what? Open up the Bible and read. So you got to ask yourself, because this class is about examination, right? As we go into the history of our forefathers, Saul, David, Cain, and Abel, examine yourself. Ask yourself, what kind of spirit are you, are you rolling in? Okay. Are you the person that is reading? Are you constantly reading? Are you applying the scriptures? Or you're going weeks and months and days without studying? You know, that's why we have the classes set up. The four chapters a day, the daily bread, the most high is taking the excuses away. So at the end of the days, when uh, Christ comes back, when you stand before the Most High in the judgment seat, there will be no excuses. The Most High gave you every opportunity in the world to what? To study, to pray, and to apply. All right? Christ said, blessed is he that what? Blessed is he that readeth. Mm -hmm. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Go back to Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. Read on. That we through patience mm -hmm. and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Because the things that we're going through now, brothers and sisters, guess what? Our forefathers went through worse. All right. There's nobody running around. And, and when you examine any camps. Um, in the nation of Israel, not only in Israel united in Christ, right? But the whole nation of Israel, all these different camps that you see on YouTube, nobody's running around getting martyred. Nobody's head is being chopped off. Nobody's being thrown into hot burning furnace, okay? What do we have now? We have trials, and those trials are gonna come, okay? Those trials are gonna come because the dragon is wroth. But it's not going to be on the same level as our forefathers. When we read in the scriptures what Peter went through, what Paul went through after 70 AD, what many of the disciples went through. OK, so there's no excuses, brothers. It's just trials, tribulation and sin. You are your own worst enemy right now. OK, you have to conquer in you. You have to conquer you. OK, um, let's get judges now. Let's get the book of Judges, and I want to open up with chapter 21, Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, all right? This is to set the premise for those of you who are new to um, our teachings, who are online right now in the book of Judges, when you read the entirety of the book of Judges, there were no kings in Israel, okay? Read. The book of Judges chapter 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. In those days, mm -hmm. there was no king in Israel. Mm -hmm. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. There was no king. There was no shepherd. There was no leader to guide the flock, to lead the nation of Israel. Everybody did what was wise in their own eyes. What does that mean? They walked after their own opinions, their own thoughts. 
okay, their own feelings, their own lust, whether, whatever was within, that's what they did. There was no king in Israel, okay? And the kings that were set up were supposed to guide us, right? Were supposed to guide us according, not to what they thought, not to what they felt, but according to the words of God. Now let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8, and we want verse 4. So we just read in the book of Judges that there was no kings in Israel. Everybody did whatever they wanted to do. Okay, like us today, like the Negroes today. Examine, our, examine the communities. Okay, our nation today in America, not just here, but scattered abroad. We do what we want. We do what we feel. Okay, we walk according to our own thoughts. It's the same thing. That's why we are the ones in the need of a savior. All right, we are the ones in need of a king. Because we need that shepherd. We need that guidance. Without that, we're lost as a people. First Samuel chapter 8 and verse 4. You're going to read 4 to 9. The book of First Samuel chapter 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah mm -hmm. and said unto him, Behold, thou art old. And thy sons walk not in thy ways. Mm -hmm. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So Saul, I mean Samuel, was getting up in age. All right. And the people came up to him and said, look, make us somebody, make us a king who can judge us, who can lead us. All right. Because your sons is wicked as hell. So they weren't looking to Samuel's son to lead. All right. They wanted a king. All right. First Samuel um, 8 again. Read. Uh, one verse. Uh, Read verse five. Yes, sir. First Samuel chapter eight, verse five. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, behold, thou art, thou art old mm -hmm. and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Mm -hmm. But the thing displeased Samuel mm -hmm. when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Because Samuel was not a king. He was a prophet. And he was getting his direct instructions from God. And guess what? That wasn't enough for the people. They wanted a king. Okay, so what happened? Read. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and mm -hmm. all that they say unto thee. Mm -hmm. For they have not rejected thee, mm -hmm. but they have rejected me. Why? Because Samuel was appointed from God. Samuel was not speaking his own thoughts. Samuel was appointed from God. So that's that's something that we need to um, examine right there, because when a prophet or leader is set up, is set up from the most high God. Samuel was walking in the commandments of God. So when you reject Samuel, what are you doing? You're rejecting the most high God. And it's the same thing within the nation of Israel, right? The scripture says those that despise governments. What we have in Israel united in Christ, spearheaded by Bishop Nathaniel, guess what? It's a government. So when you murmur and you gossip about the people that's um, leading, supervising these various congregations that we have, who are you speaking against? Because who put the brothers who put the brothers up? Who moved the spirits of the bishops and deacons to appoint these men in your states? The Most High did. So when you reject them, you murmur against them. You're talking ag of directly against the Most High. That's what you're doing. And a lot of our people have not realized that yet. Okay. And when you even examine outside of Israel, like, I don't know if you've seen um, Deacon Abiel's Fix Your Face last night, clickbait. That thing was amazing. Um, if y'all get a chance, go back and watch it if you missed it. Okay. He was talking about other camps outside of uh, IUIC who despise Israel United in Christ. But these same brothers who speak against us, they don't realize that it's the Mosai who set the bishop up, who moved, who moved his spirit to do this, to do that. He's not walking according to his own heart. That's what we don't realize, man. Why? Because our people are still stuck in a carnal state. All right. They're not they haven't tapped into that spirituality part of the scriptures yet. The most eyes blinded them. They think that this is what a movement of men works of men. They don't see that the most high God is behind Israel united in Christ. And you also have those within who despise governments. You moving in the same spirit. Y'all moving in the same spirit. That's why you got to check your spirit. What spirit are you rolling in? Are you rolling with the spirit of Saul, David, Cain, or Abel? We got to really examine ourselves. Read verse um, 7 again. Verse 7. 
And the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, mm -hmm. for they have not rejected thee, mm -hmm. but they have rejected me. Come on. That I should not reign over them. Read. According to all the works which they have done since the day mm -hmm. that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day. Wherewith they have forsaken me mm -hmm. and served other gods. Come on. So do they also unto thee. Read. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice, mm -hmm. howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, mm -hmm. and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. So now get me First Samuel chapter 9. So the Most High God gave Samuel specific instructions, and he followed them, all right? At verse 9, it says, show them the king that shall reign over them. But I want to skip that part. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 9. We're going to come back to chapter 8. Let's get 1 Samuel chapter 9, and I want 17 to 19. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And when Samuel saw Saul... Mm -hmm. the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Behold the man whom I spake to thee of. This same shall reign over my people. Mm -hmm. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Come on. Keep reading. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, mm -hmm. set not thy mind on them. Because the asses were lost and Saul, um, Saul got instruction from his father to go look for them. Go ahead. For they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Mm -hmm. Is it not on thee mm -hmm. and on all thy father's house? Read. And Saul answered and said, mm -hmm. am not I a Benjamite? So this is the start of it. This is where we got to examine the characteristics and attributes of Saul, our forefather. So Saul realized, he knew that Samuel was a seer. He knew that he was a prophet. He knew that he was a man of God. And what did he say in verse 21? Read it again. And Saul answered and said, mm -hmm. am not I a Benjamite? And Saul answered and said, am not I a Benjamite? Come on. Of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Come on. And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Come on. Wherefore, then speakest thou so to me? So what, what was he exemplifying here? He was showing the characteristics of non-leadership he had doubt he had fear it's almost like he was an introvert here you are in front of a prophet the prophet is telling you look the most high is going to choose you we're going to set you up and here you are doubting yourself am i the not the least of the tribes of benjamin get me um get me leave that part get me judges 20 so what was saul talking about what came to his mind we got to go back in history a bit Go to Judges 20, and I want uh, 34 to 35. So the tribe of Benjamin was wicked as hell in the book of Judges. Why? Because they did what was according to their own mind, because there was no kings to rule in the nation of Israel at that time. Give me Judges 20, and go ahead. Read verse 34. The book of Judges, chapter 20, verse 34. Mm -hmm. And there, and there came against Gibeah mm -hmm. 10,000 chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, mm -hmm. but they knew not mm -hmm. that evil was near them. Come on. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel destroyed out of the Benjamites that day 20 and 5,000 mm -hmm. and 100 men. All these drew the sword. So 20 and 5,000 and 100 men out of the tribe of Benjamin was destroyed. So that's the history that Saul was making reference to when he said, am I not from the tribe of Benjamin, the least of the tribes? He's like, why are you coming to me? Why you want, why you want to choose me? So you think he would give glory to the Most High and he would have Samuel to lean back on as a king and accept the position that God was going to put him in. But what did he show? He showed doubt and fear. It's almost like an introvert. 
And we have that a, a lot of times in in IUIC. You'll have brothers that are quick to give up their rank. I can't do this. I can't do that. Guess what? Brothers like that, the most high cannot use you. Absolutely not. That's a weak and fearful spirit. The most high cannot use brothers like that. Okay? Get me Judges 21 and verse 12. So the, the tribe of Benjamin, for those of you who don't know that history, you should go back and read it. The tribe of Benjamin was almost completely wiped out, but the Most High had mercy on them. This is what happened. Judges chapter 21 and verse 12. The book of Judges chapter 21, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And they found among the inhabitants of Gabesh Gilead mm -hmm. 400 young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. Come on. And they brought them onto the camp to Shiloh, Read. which is in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Rimeon. So that's where Benjamin fled to. They fled to the rock of Ramon. Come on. That were in the rock Ramon and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives, which they have saved alive mm -hmm. of the woman of Jabesh Gilead. And yet so suffice them not. And yet so they suffice them not. Who's the they? The woman. So they weren't satisfied with these virgins from Jabesh Gilead. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. And they said, there must be an inheritance for them. That be escaped of Benjamin, mm -hmm. that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Come on, read How be it, we may not give them wives of our daughters. Mm -hmm. For the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. So that's the oath that Israel took. They were not going to give them their daughters. All right. So they went elsewhere to look for wives from the, for the tribe of Benjamin. Read. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh, mm -hmm. yearly, in a place which is on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel mm -hmm. to Shechem, mm -hmm. and on the south to, to Leb Lebanon. So when you read on later on in the chapter, there's only a few more verses, but for the sake of time, we're not going to read the whole thing because there's other scriptures that I got to get to. Um, they went unto Shiloh and they got in wives over there in Shiloh, okay? Because they weren't satisfied with the daughters of Jabesh Gilead. Go back to um, where you left off at, at 1 Samuel 9, 9 and 21. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 9, verse 21. And Saul answered and said, mm -hmm. Am not I a Benjamite mm -hmm. of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Come on. And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? So he had a weak spirit. He had a doubtful and weak spirit. Give me Sirach 19 verse 26. Sirach chapter 19 verse 26. Come on. Sirach chapter 19 verse 26. Mm -hmm. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head so sadly. So the Most High said, there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly. Always in doubt, always in fear. Don't know what's going on. That introvert spirit. Most High can't use spirits like that. Go ahead. But inwardly, hmm? he is full of deceit. But inwardly, but inwardly, he is not right. There's something going on inside of him that's causing him to, to uh, move a certain way, to have those certain gestures, to display those certain character flaws. There's something going on inside of that man. Because the scripture says we're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. So if you are an introvert, there ain't supposed to, be, supposed to be no introvert anymore once you come in and repent. If you have doubt and fear, like Deacon Aitan says, Satan's playground, you're supposed to come and rejoice before the Lord and be bold okay you're not supposed to show doubt and fear and so forth the scripture says we're supposed to be changed into a new man okay but read what Sirach says come on verse 26 there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly hmm? but inwardly he is full of deceit but inwardly he is full of deceit is that it 
That was at 26. Okay, now get me first Samuel chapter 8. Because some people online watching now, they might be like, well, what was the deceit? Because Samuel was a young man. What was the deceit? What was going on inside of him? What? How was the spirit of Saul? Because just like God told Jeremiah, before you was in the belly, I knew thee. What did God know about Saul that nobody else knew? It just Samuel and God knew this about Saul, who was supposed to become king. Let's read it. First Samuel chapter eight, and I want verse 11. It was more than just the history of Benjamin, of what happened during the time of Judges. There was more. There was more things. There was something going on in the spiritual realm of Saul. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 8, and I want verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. This, this, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you, reign over the children of Israel since they desire a king so much. Samuel, um, Samuel receiving his instructions from God was not enough for the children of Israel. So they desired a king and God knew the spirit that would be inside of this king. Read. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself. Come on. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself. Come on. For his chariots. Come on. And to be his horsemen. Read on. And some shall run before his chariots. Read. And he will appoint him captains over thousands mm -hmm. and captains over fifties mm -hmm. and will set them to ear his ground. Read on. And to reap his harvest. And to reap his harvest. Come on. And to make his instruments of war. Mm -hmm. And instruments of his chariots. Read on. And he will take your daughters mm -hmm. to be confectionaries. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries. And to be cooks. And to be bakers. Read on. And he will take your fields. Mm -hmm. And your vineyards. Mm -hmm. And your olive yards mm, and he will take your fields your vineyards and your olive yards come on even the best of them even the best of them so he, if he takes the best of them what are you left with the worst of them so what kind of character flaw is this a selfish one not a one that wants to follow God not a one that wants to keep the, the word of the most high not a one that looks out for the benefit of the people but a selfish one, a very selfish one. This is what, this is the spirit that was in Saul, that God knew, that the people didn't know, but they was begging for a king. So what did God do? He gave them exactly what they wanted. Okay, read. Even the best of them mm -hmm. and give them to his servants. Mm -hmm. And he will take the tenth of your seed mm -hmm. and of your vineyards and give it to his officers mm -hmm. and to his servants. Read on. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. Read. He will take the tenth of your sheep mm -hmm. and ye shall be his servants. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be his servants. Read on. And ye shall cry out in that day mm -hmm. because of your king, mm -hmm. which ye shall have chosen you. So <laughs> look what the Most High says. You're going to cry out in that day because of the king, which ye, which ye shall have chosen you. Meaning you chose this king. Okay. It wasn't, this wasn't ordained by the Most High. We know everything's of the Most High, but this is not, not what really the Most High wanted. Because he says, look, they rejected you, Samuel. They rejected me. You know what? Give them Saul. Give them what they want. Okay? And this is what they received. Go ahead. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Mm. And the Most High says, I will not hear you in that day. In that day. Give me 1 Timothy 3, verse 6. Give me 1 Timothy 3, verse 6. First Timothy chapter three, verse six, because when you examine Saul, brothers and sisters, Saul was the only child. Saul was the only child. He didn't have any siblings. When you compare it to David, David had brothers. 
David had oh, six or seven brothers or something like that. All right. Saul was the only child and there was no king. He was not groomed. He was not groomed. Let me repeat that again. He was not groomed to be in the position that he that um, the most High put him in. OK, he wasn't groomed for that. The most High just put him out there because that's what the people wanted. Give them the king that you choose. Give me first Timothy's three verse six. The book of First Timothy, chapter three, verse six. Mm -hmm. Not a novice. Not a novice. Come on. Lest being lifted up with pride, uh -huh. he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And we see that. We see that in um, Israel United in Christ. That's why uh, Bishop is very firm as to whom gets into uh, into these certain positions, certain offices um, in the body. All right, because we see how a novice. Everything will go to your head. You'll be puffed up with pride. And guess what? It'll be just destruction. And you see that outside of Israel United in Christ, brothers. You see these new camps pop up. 17, 18 year olds calling themselves elders. Oh, we had people that sat right here at the foot of the bishop. Captains, officers, soldiers left IUIC. Now what do they call themselves? I am Grand Master Puba to the 10th power. Everybody come and worship me. What are they doing? Nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. When you search their videos, the video been out for a year. You know how many views it got? Guess how many views it got? 10? No, guess. Keep going. 20? Nope. Five? Two views. <laughs> Two views! <laughs> Two views! And that's them? And the person and the reader. That's them and the reader. Two views in one year. Why? Because they're a novice. They weren't groomed for that position. They weren't groomed for that position. Brothers and sisters, this is spiritual. This is not carnal. Okay? This is spiritual. Okay? Positions come from the most high. Okay? You have to be deemed worthy. The most high has to see what kind of spirit you're working in and then put you in that, move the heart of men to put you in that position. OK, because we got um, we just recently I've been getting texts on my phone. How come how come I've been this for so many years? And I'm not a soldier. Well, brother, are you uh, attending on MOV? How's the attendance? Are you in good standing? Are you giving arms? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Which they already know. I shouldn't be receiving no text messages from nobody asking for rank. That is the wrong spirit. Brothers, listen clearly. That is the wrong spirit spirit to be in read first timothy 3 verse 6 again first timothy chapter 3 verse 6 mm -hmm. not a novice and saul was a novice saul was a novice god gave them a novice come on less being lifted up with pride mm -hmm. he fall into the condemnation of the devil he fall into the condemnation of the devil give me second timothy's now chapter 1 and verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, because not only was Saul a novice, but he had doubt and fear, okay, which is Satan's playground. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us the spirit of power, faith, boldness. OK, but you got it. That comes in time. That comes in time. Not everybody that comes into Israel United in Christ. You, you, you go through the process of repenting your first week, your first couple of days. You might have that spirit of fear on you. You might have that spirit of fear to go out onto camp on the highways and byways and resurrect our people. That's why in due time, in due season, what you got to what? You got to study, pray, and apply and ask the Most High to remove that spirit of fear from you and give you that spirit, that boldness spirit that you see in the, in the leadership position, like the bishop and deacons. You got to pray for that thing. You got to pray for that thing. Okay, the Most High says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Read. But of power. But of what? Power. But of power. Who can stand before this word? Nobody. Nothing made of flesh and blood, no principalities, no workers of darkness in high places. Nothing can stand before the words of the Most High. That's why the Most High says I'm going to consume them with the spirit of my mouth. Not your mouth, but the words of God. God says, but with power and what? 
And of love. And of love, which is keeping the commandments. Is that it? And of a sound mind. Which gives us a sound mind. When you keep the commandments of God, it will give you a sound mind. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. So not only did he have doubt and fear, brothers, but what else? 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. Come on. The book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. Mm -hmm. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. Mm -hmm. God is love. Come on. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Read. And God in him. Mm -hmm. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love, our keeping of the commandments, our belief in God, our faith. Herein is our love. Come on. That we may have boldness mm. in the day of judgment. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. What is that going into? What is that going into? Not having what a guilty conscience. Knowing that, guess what? I kept the commandments. To the best of my ability in boldness not with doubt and fear read because as he is so are we in this world come on there is no fear in love there is no fear in love which is there is no fear in keeping the commandments of god no fear of plague no fear of sickness no fear of death no fear of ridicule no fear of what people in the world is going to think of you or what these other camps think of us. We're going to walk in the fear of the most high God. Come on. There is no fear in love. Come on. But perfect love casteth out fear. But perfect love, perfect love, perfect love casteth out fear. Once you keep the commandments, you don't got to be fearful. We see what's going on around the world right now with these plagues and these different things. Floodings and disasters, natural. Don't worry about that. And guess what? If we do get caught up in that and somebody ends up perishing, guess what? We're going to see them again. We are going to see them in the resurrection. But you got to have faith in that. You can't walk in doubt and fear. That's why we got to look at how our forefathers moved and the bad attributes don't make those mistakes. But in order to do that, you got to be what? You got to be reading. That's why we read earlier, brothers and sisters, blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. Is that it? Is that all of verse 18? Because fear hath torment. Mm -hmm. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You hear that? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. That's why brothers, that's why certain brothers, well, I don't think I'm ready for this, for this position. Cap, what you mean you don't think you're ready? Well, uh, uh, uh. why? Because there's something going on in the spirit realm. That's why. Okay, get me 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 21. 1 Samuel, again, we're still talking about Saul, still examining Saul. And while we go over these scriptures, examine ourselves, brothers and sisters, not only you, but me too. Examine ourselves, okay? See what spirit we're rolling in, okay? 1 Samuel 9, verse 21. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Mm -hmm. And my family, the least of all families of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Wherefore then, speakest thou so to me? Okay, that was the same thing we read earlier, right? And he showed he showed doubt and fear. Jump up to verse uh, to chapter fifteen, First Samuel chapter fifteen. We're gonna read one through twenty-two. So. It says, perfect love casteth out fear. We read that. The love is the keeping of the commandments, all right? Now we got to ask ourselves, well, did Saul keep the commandments of God? Because we read about doubt. We read about fear. Did he keep the commandments of God? Did he do what God instructed him to do via Samuel? Let's read. First Samuel chapter 15. I want to start at, I want to start at um, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 1 Samuel also said unto Saul mm -hmm. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king Over his people Over Israel mm -hmm. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, mm -hmm. how he laid wait for him in the way mm -hmm. when he came up from Egypt. So notice what Samuel says in verse two. He didn't say thus saith Samuel. He says thus saith the Lord of hosts. So who gave Samuel this message to deliver to Saul? The Lord of hosts. Come on. Verse three, now go and smite Amalek mm -hmm. and utterly destroy all that they have mm -hmm. and spare them not. Come on. So he gave him an order. He said, go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and meaning all their possessions, destroy it, dismantle it. Come on. But slay both man and woman, Come on. infant and suckling, mm -hmm. ox and sheep, camel and ass. Read. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them to tem tell him mm -hmm. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Read. And Saul came to a city of Amalek. So this was a city of Amalek. This was not the whole nation of Amalek. It was just a city of Amalek. Come on. And laid wait in the valley. Read. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, mm -hmm. lest I destroy you with them. Mm -hmm. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Come on. And Saul smote the Amalekites mm -hmm. from Hevala unto, unto thou comest to Shur, mm -hmm. that is over against Egypt. Then he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Mm, so he took Agag alive. Was that the instruction that God gave Samuel to give to Saul? No, no. He was self-willed. He was self-willed. Go ahead. Come on. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Come on. But Saul and the people spared Agag mm -hmm. and the best of the sheep. And of the oxen, mm -hmm. and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good. Mm, come on, read. And, and would not utterly destroy them, mm -hmm. but everything that was vile and, and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Come on, read. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, mm. for he has turned back from following me, Come on. and have not performed my commandments. And have not performed my commandments. Read on. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Mm. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, mm -hmm. it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Car Carmel, mm -hmm. and behold, he sent him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, mm -hmm. Blessed be thou of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now he says, blessed be thou. Now pay attention, brothers and sisters, this is in verse 13. He says, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Read. And Samuel said, mm -hmm. what meaneth then this beating of the sheep in mine ears? So Samuel, here's the sheep. Samuel hears the sheep like what? What is this I hear? All I hear is bad, bad. I'm not supposed to hear that because everything was supposed to be utterly destroyed. Thus saith the Lord. Read. And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. Come on. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. Now notice what Saul said. He says they, meaning the men. So he already took the he already took the blame and put it on his subjects, on his servants, on his people. He says, and Saul said, they have brought them. Come on. For the people spared the best of the sheep mm -hmm. and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Mm, come on. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. But that's not what the Most High wanted. The Most High didn't want that. Read on. Come on. Then Samuel said unto Saul, mm -hmm. stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord had said to me this mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, say on. 
And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? When was Saul little in his own sight? We read that earlier, brothers and sisters. We read it earlier when Saul said, Am I not the least of the tribe of Benjamin? He had no self-confidence. He had doubt and fear. Come on. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Most High still anointed him king over Israel because that's what the people wanted. Come on. And the Lord sent thee on a journey mm -hmm. and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, mm -hmm. and fight against them until they be consumed. Come on. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. but didst fly upon the spoil, mm -hmm. and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. Read. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Now, mind you, this is a prophet. This is a seer before Saul. Right? He's correcting him. This is the second time. This is after Samuel spoke. Saul comes back and says, But I've obeyed the word of the Lord. No, you didn't obey the word of the Lord. Samuel is telling you, God said to destroy, destroy all of the Amalekites in this city. Not only the Amalekites, but all their possessions, their cattle, their sheep, everything dead. Wife dead, infant dead. Saul did not listen. Samuel checked him on it and he's still coming back and lying and said, but... I did what God wanted me to do. Read. Come on. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me hmm? and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, hmm? and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Hmm? But the people took of the spoil. And he's still blaming the people. But the people follow your orders. Let's say, okay, let's say it was just the people that went out to battle, right? Mm -hmm. The people came back. He should have, he could have, correct, like, what, what are you doing bringing back Agag? What is this sheep? What is this goat? Did not the Lord say to destroy it? Go back and destroy them and follow what the Most High did. He would have been justified in that. But no, he hearkened unto the people. Why? Because he was exemplifying a character flaw of being weak, of being bashful. Okay, read. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things mm -hmm. which should have been utterly destroyed, mm -hmm. to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. In Gilgal. Get me, uh, what do I want? Uh, read verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord has great day excuse me, I'll read that again. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Does the Lord have delight in burnt offering and sacrifices? Because that's what he said that the, uh, they were going to take the animals for, to sacrifice unto the Most High. But that's not the directions that the Most High gave you. Read. As in obeying the voice of the Lord. Come on. Behold, to obey is better. To follow the commandments is better. Come on. Than sacrifice. Come on. And to hearken than the fat of ram. Read on. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Read on. And stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because when you're stubborn, when you're rebellious, it's all about self. It's all about self. In this in this case, it was about Saul and and the um satisfying his people. Because the people wanted those cattle. Come on, read on. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. Read. He has also rejected thee from being king. Now get me Sirach. I want Sirach chapter 20 and verse 2. Sirach chapter 20 and verse 2. Sirach chapter 20 verse 2. Read. The book of Sirach chapter 20 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Is it much better to reprove mm -hmm. than to be angry secretly? The Bible says it is much better to reprove than to be angry. This is Sirach 20 verse 22. 20 and verse 2? No, let's get Sirach chapter 20 verse 22. Oh. The book of Sirach, chapter 20, verse 22. Come on. There is that destroyeth his own soul. So the Most High said, there is one that destroyeth his own soul. So what did Saul do here? For being rebellious, right? For having um, stuff.
stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. He destroyed his own soul. Why? Because he disobeyed the word, the commandment of God. Read on. Through bashfulness. Through what? Bashfulness. Through bashfulness, because all he had to do was correct the people. Kill Agag, like the Most High said. Kill those cattle, like the Most High said. It's better to obey than to what? Give burnt offerings and sacrifices. He did not obey. Why? Because he was bashful. That's another character flaw that he had. So it's not only doubt and fear that we read earlier, but he was bashful. Read, come on. And by accepting of persons. But by accepting of persons, come on. Overthroweth himself. Overthroweth himself. Overthroweth himself. And that's what happened to Saul. Now let's examine the whole nation of Israel. Let's bring it up until this day. Let's examine the whole nation of Israel. The Bible says that we were to what? Obey God rather than men. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that. That just popped up in my mind. Let's get that real quick. Um, no, uh, Acts in Acts 5. It's better to obey God rather than men. We're going to bring this up to speed because we're reading what? The things are written aforetime, brothers, was written for our learning that we might have hope. All right. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. we ought to obey God rather than men. Hold that. Hold that. No, so you're holding three things right now, right? Hold that. You're holding Sirach, chapter 20, verse 22. Go to Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Let's bring it up to today because there's many different different congregations within the nation of Israel. But the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than men. So what's going on today? Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Mm -hmm. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So we understand the latter half of that. When it says a man should not put on a woman's garment. But the first part of that, a lot of congregations still have not realized that yet. Why? Because they're accepting of persons. They're bashful and they despise the word of the Lord. So what they do is they turn and they they the spirit of Saul is on them. So they look at us and what do they say? They call us faggots, the F words, homosexuals. Because not only, um, well, that's for the fringes part, but Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, they say, okay, the woman, the woman can wear pants because they can't get their woman in order. It's hard for them to get the woman in their congregation to put on a dress, to put on a skirt like the Most High says. So they look at us and say, nah, come on, man. Look what y'all doing. That's not what the scripture says. When it talks about pants, that's talking about war pants. Get me numbers. Get me numbers now. Get me numbers. Numbers chapter 15. Before you, before you do that, go back to Acts again. Read 529. Because we might have some of them online. Because you know they be in our classes. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Acts. Go Acts ahead. chapter 5 verse 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. We ought to obey God rather than men. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. Now let's jump to another congregation in Israel. Okay. Come on. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel mm -hmm. and bid them that they make them fringes mm -hmm. in the borders of their garments. So the Mosai says to make them fringes in the borders of their garment or garments? Garments. Garments, meaning your clothing, all of your clothing, whatever you wear. Make them fringes on it. So one camp in particular will be like, oh, those guys are gay. They're gay because they have fringes on their garments. But the scripture says we ought to obey God rather than men. So you see the spirit of Saul in a lot of these different congregations outside of the um, Israel United in Christ to where they want to appease the people because they know the men, they don't want to do that. The men have doubt and fear. So they don't want to put fringes on. They don't want the whole world to know those are the Israelites. So they point fingers at us. Why? Because that spirit of Saul is on them. Okay, that doubt and fearful and bashful spirit. 
to where they don't want to do what the commandment says. They're walking in the spirit of what? Witchcraft and rebellious. So they point fingers at us. Let's get another one. Get me that in um um in Timothy's. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. And brothers and sisters, we got to examine ourselves and make sure that we don't roll in that spirit. Commandments first. The most high commandments comes before everything. Come on. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. Come on. A bishop then must be blameless. Come on. The husband of one wife. One wife. One wife. Come on. Vigilant. Go down to verse. Uh, go down to the deacons. Verse 12, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. That's all that's written in the New Testament. It says the husband of one wife. Camps will hear that and they'll see us do it and they'll call us out of our name and say, well, they're gay. They're homosexuals because they have one wife. But what the hell? What the hell's going on? Last time I checked, the gay person don't, don't have a, 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 a wife. A gay person has a husband. So how the hell are we gay? Because we're applying the words of God. Go back to Acts 5, verse 29 again. This what was going on with Saul. Okay, he wanted to appease the people. You'll be here, we have a leader over a congregation, right? Can't get the congregation in order. So, okay, you guys could have multiple whores. That's fine. You can have multiple whores. Why? Because you want to appease the men. You want to satisfy the men. You don't want to satisfy God. That's the same thing that Saul did when he spared Agag and he spared the cattle. That's rebelliousness. Okay, Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Come on. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Come on. We ought to obey God. We ought to obey God. Come on. Rather than men. Rather than men. Rather than men. Have Saul listened to that? He would have been in a good position. But the Most High got rid of him. Why? Because he obeyed men. He obeyed his own thoughts and men rather than the Most High God. All right. Go back to Sirach 20 and verse 22 again. Come on. Sirach 20 verse 22. Let's read that again. The book of Sirach chapter 20 verse 22. Mm -hmm. There is that destroyeth his own soul. There is that destroyeth his own soul. Because when you teach him, don't wear fringes on your garments. Like the Bible says, when you're teaching, woman can wear pants. When you're teaching multiple whores, not one wife, you destroy your own soul. And not only that, you destroy the souls of the people under you. Why? Because you're made a leader over the flock. You're supposed to guide the congregation according to the scriptures, not your own thoughts. Read. There is that destroyeth his own soul. Come on. Through bashfulness. Through bashfulness. Scared, scared to tell the congregation the right thing because you're afraid people might leave or they might look at you a certain way. Come on. And by accepting of persons. And by accepting of persons, because that's what Saul did. Accepting persons. Come on. Overthroweth himself. Overthroweth himself. Overthroweth himself. Now let's examine the footsteps of our forefather David in comparison to Saul okay let's get first Samuel chapter 17 and verse 23 so we got to ask ourselves brothers and sisters what what does the spirit of Saul look like today okay the house of Saul is led by fear but calls it good leadership the house of Saul is led by fear but calls it good leadership what is the fear I'm talking about the fear of Reprimanding the congregation and setting them in order, thus saith the Lord, according to the scriptures, because they are scared that they might lose um, the people in their congregation. OK, that's why they allow them to have multiple whores. They allow a woman to wear pants. That's like the Christian church. Come as you are. Stay as you are. Oh, you don't have to wear fringes on all your clothes. That's gay. Don't do that. Only on the Sabbath. Where is that in the scriptures? That is fear. So the house of Saul is led by fear and they call it good leadership. These leaders allow the people to direct them and move them. OK, that's what a lot of their doctrines is based on is based off the appeasement of the people. OK, unfortunately, those who think according to the house of Saul or spirit of Saul have deceived themselves into believing that they're doing God's will and they're not doing God's will. Because God's will, according to Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8, is to keep the commandments of God. 
Let's go to our forefather, David, now. In comparison to Saul, let's get 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, verse 23. We're going to read all the way down to 37. Come on. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And as he talked with them, mm -hmm. behold, there came up the champion of the, Philistine, of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, Come on. out of the armies of the Philistines, mm -hmm. and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, mm -hmm. and all the men of Israel, when they saw the men, fled from them fled from him and were so afraid mm -hmm. and the men of israel said have ye seen this man that is come up surely do surely to defy israel he is come up and is shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches come on and will give him his daughter mm -hmm. And make his father's house free in Israel. Read. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And taketh away the reproach from Israel. Come on. For who is this uncircumcised uncircumcised Philistine? So David knew that this Philist the other nations was uncircumcised. Okay, come on. That he should defy the armies of the living God. Read. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. So they repeated they repeated what they said in verse 25, as far as the great riches will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Come on. And Eliab, his eldest brother. So David had brothers, unlike Saul, right? David had brothers. Come on. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. Mm -hmm. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Mm -hmm. And he said, Why camest thou, why camest thou down hither? Mm -hmm. And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Read. I know thy pride. Come on. And the naughtiness of thine heart. Read. For thou art come down, that thou mightest see the battle. Read. And David said, what have I now done? Say, what did I do? Come on. Is there not a cause? Is this not a cause? You got this uncircumcised heathen over here trying to defy the armies of Israel. Okay, I'm here to support. Read. And he turned from him toward another. Now he turned from him, his brother Eliab, the eldest brother, towards another. Come on. And spake after the same manner. Read. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And the people gave him the same answer as before about the great riches, about um, we'll give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Come on. And when the words were heard, which David spake, mm -hmm. they rehearsed them before Saul. Come on. And he sent for him. Read. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Uh -huh. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Wow. You hear how David, David did not show fear here. But Saul showed fear. He says, look, don't let any of your servant's heart fail for him. Meaning fail because of Goliath. Come on. And Saul said to David, mm -hmm. thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, mm -hmm. for thou art but a youth, mm -hmm. and he a man of war from his youth. Read. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, mm -hmm. and there came a lion mm -hmm. and a bear, mm -hmm. and took a lamb out of the flock, mm -hmm. and I went out after him. So stop right there. Go back to verse 33 real quick. Verse 33. Oh, verse 32. I'm sorry. Verse 32. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. And David said to Saul, uh -huh. let no man's heart fail because of him. So whose heart was failed? And it wasn't only the men. Guess who? It was also Saul. Let's prove that. First Samuel 17, verse 11. Just jump back. 17, verse 11. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. When Saul and all Israel. When Saul and who? All Israel. When Saul and all Israel. Come on. Heard those words of the Philistine. Uh -huh. They were dismayed uh -huh. and greatly afraid. So instead of asking the most high, you have the Lord of hosts, the army of the living God on your side. Instead of asking for him, remove that fearful spirit of me. They were dismayed. They were fearful and dismayed. And as a king over Israel, you can't be fearful and dismayed. 
That spirit jumped on all the men. But that's what Saul was dealing with from the beginning. He had doubt and fear. From the beginning, he had doubt and fear. That spirit jumped on all the men. That spirit jumped on all the men. Jump back. Jump back to David now. Um, 33. 33. Come on. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Mm -hmm. For thou art but a youth. So he was looking at his outer appearance. He said, what? Come on, man. You, you're a little kid, man. What's wrong with you? Go ahead. Come and on. And he a man of war. And, from and Goliath a man of war. From his youth. Read. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. Mm -hmm. And there came a lion mm -hmm. and a bear. Not only a lion, but a bear. A lion and a bear. Now in this time, you see a lion and bear, you running. Some of you go to the zoo, you scared to pet that thing. You won't even go up to the cage. Why? Because a lion would tear you to pieces. David wasn't scared of no lion. He wasn't scared of no bear. Come on. And took a lamb mm -hmm. out of the flock. Opened his mouth with all the, the fangs and teeth and everything. Opened his mouth and took the lamb from out of his mouth. Come on. And I went out after him uh -huh. and smote him. He went out after him and smote him. He killed him. So he had to be what? He had to have a weapon in his hand. He didn't just, what, choke him out? Nah, he killed him. Went out after and killed him. Come on. And delivered it out of his mouth. Read. And when he arose against me, mm -hmm. I caught him by his beard. Damn, come on. And smote him. He even grabbed him by the paws. He grabbed him by his beard, by his mane. Come on. And slew him. And slew him. Read. Thy servant slew both the lion mm -hmm. and the bear. Mm -hmm. And this uncircumcised Philistine mm. shall be as one of them. Uh, come on. Seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. But he had defied the armies of the living God. Read on. David said, moreover, mm -hmm. The Lord that delivered. The what? The Lord. So what did David do here? He acknowledged the Lord. He wasn't selfish. He acknowledged the Lord. Everything we do is of the Lord. That's why we have uh, monthly fastings. That's why the bishop always says we got to pray. We got to fast. Everything is of the Lord. Israel united in Christ on the pinnacle, the top um, congregation. Out of all the nation of Israel, because that's what I've seen. I'm going to say it boldly. I ain't going to hold it in. I don't care who gets offended. I don't care who's watching. Israel United in Christ is the number one camp. It is what it is. Now, that's not saying that the Most High is not using the other camps to a certain degree. But what I see right now, the Most High has magnificent favor, blessings upon Israel United in Christ. Okay? And we're supposed to give the glory to the Most High in everything we do, first and foremost. So David did the same thing. He says, the Lord. He didn't say I delivered. He said, the Lord, come on. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. Come on. And out of the paw of the bear. Read. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Read. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Read. And Saul armed David with his armor, mm -hmm. and he put an helmet of brass upon his head, mm -hmm. and he armed him with a coat of mail. Mm -hmm. And David girdled his sword upon his armor, mm -hmm. and he stayed to go, mm -hmm. for he had not proved it. So these armors that he have, the sword that he had, the helmet, he didn't prove it. Okay, meaning he didn't he didn't get to try it on and and see whether it would be a, a benefit to him, an advantage or a disadvantage. So what did he do? Come on. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, mm -hmm. for I have not proved them. He didn't have pride. He didn't let pride swallow him up. Okay, that's what we got to do as a congregation. We can't have pride on us, okay? For example, in these different offices, if you have a certain task that you have to fulfill and it won't be fulfilled on time or you need help, ask. Hey, brother, you do this well. You do that well. Teach me. Share your talents with me. And it's the same thing with these other congregations, okay, outside of IUIC. You see that the Lord is favoring Israel United in Christ. Why, why not reach out to us and follow our footsteps? Why not keep the commandments so the Most High could exalt you in due season to reverence him? His all praises to the Father. Why do I say that? We had a brother reach out to us and 
tell the bishop verbatim, look, that um, the new moon breakdown that you did, we know it's right, but we're not going to follow it. The leaders, the men of the congregation are not going to adhere to it because it came from you. That is wicked as hell. That is wicked as hell. Now you wonder why, why your video is out one year, two views. Why the most high, you can't reach nowhere. You can't grab the apple that's on the tree. Meanwhile, the tree is only six feet tall, but you still can't reach it. But when we reach for those apples and we gather the apples, you say, you know what? To hell with the tree. I didn't want the apples anyway. You got the devil on you. You got the devil on you. That's why we got to look back at the record of our forefathers and follow the spirit and the track records of our forefathers. OK, and I'm talking about the good forefathers, the ones that satisfied the most high God. OK, follow those examples. That's why Paul said the things written a lot of four times was written for our learning. Read. Verse 39 again. Come on. Verse 39. And David girdled his sword upon his armor, mm -hmm. and he a stayed to go. Read. For he had not proved it. Come on. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. So he took them, he took them things off. Why? Because he had a what? He had a mindset. He was in an Israelite state of mind. He had the proper mindset to understand that these were too heavy for him, or he couldn't, he couldn't maneuver. He couldn't, he wouldn't be agile with the armor, agile with the sword. And he also understood: look, the fight is of the Lord. So whether I come to this dude with a sword, a boomerang, an axe, or a rock, the Most High is going to deliver this uncircumcised heathen into my hand. Read. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones mm -hmm. out of the brook mm -hmm. and put them in a shepherd's bag. Come on. Which he had mm -hmm. even in a, in a skirt. Scrip. Even in a scrip. Come on. And his sling was in his hand, mm -hmm. and he drew near to the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. Come on. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Come on. And when the Philistine looked about mm -hmm. and saw David, mm -hmm. he disdained him, uh -huh. for he was but a youth. Because he was what? For he was but a youth. Come on. And ruddy mm -hmm. and of a fair countenance. Now, before we explain verse 42, there's something that I skipped. Get me a Luke. Get me Luke chapter um, 14, 28 to 31. This was a parable from Christ. And this is what David did in verse 39 and 40 when he said he proved what he had on. And he said, I can't take this and go to war. So he took it off. Look what Christ said. Look at the example Christ gave us in Luke 14, verse 28 to 31. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For which of you, intending to build a tower, mm -hmm. sitteth not down first mm -hmm. and counteth the cost? So he, count, he counted the cost. He said, look, I can't wear this. I can't put this on. Let me take it off. All right. So I can what? Move, be agile and so forth. Come on. Whether he has sufficient to finish it. Uh-huh. Less happily after he had laid the foundation mm -hmm. and is not able to finish it. Mm -hmm. All that behold it began to mock him. Read on. Saying, this man began to build uh -huh. and was not able to finish. Come on. Or what king going to make war go against... With, goeth to make war. Goeth to make war. That's what was going on. Saul was at war with the Philistines. David stepped up and he counted the course. Read. Going to make war mm -hmm. against another king. Mm -hmm. Sitteth not down first. Mm -hmm. And consulteth whether he be able to, te excuse me, whether he be able with 10,000 mm -hmm. to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. So that's what David did. He sat back. He counted the cause. He said, look, I haven't proved this armor. Let me take it off. 
you know, the fighters of the Lord, give me these smooth stones. I'm going to go to him with a slingshot. Forget a sword. I'm going to put a rock through his head. Okay. David counted the course. Go to Psalms 18 verse 34. Actually, no, go back to first Samuel. I'm sorry. First Samuel, you were in chapter 17. You left off at verse 42. 42. Come on. Uh, verse 43. Mm -hmm. And a Philistine said unto David, mm -hmm. Am I a dog mm -hmm. that thou comest to me with staves? Mm -hmm. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come on. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air. Come on. And to the beasts of the fields. Mm -hmm. Then David to the Philistine. Then said David. Come on. Then said David to the Philistine. Uh -huh. Thou comest to me with a sword. You came to me with a sword. Come on. And with a spear. And with a spear. Imagine that. Imagine the weight. All right. And the other chapter tells you how much these things weighed that Goliath was carrying around. Read. And with a shield. So he had a sword, a spear, and a shield. Come on. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. David said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. So this is another time where David gave reverence to the Most High first. Read. The God of the armies of Israel. Read. Whom thou hast defied. Get me Psalms 18 verse 34. So look at the, the spirit that David is rolling in already. Not showing fear, not showing doubt, and giving glory to the most high God first and foremost. Psalms 18 verse 34. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 18 verse 34. Mm -hmm. He teacheth my hands to war. He teacheth. Who's the he that teacheth his hands to war? God. That's why back in Samuel said, I've come to you in the name of the Lord because you defied the armies of the living God. He teacheth my hands to war. What else? So that a bow of steel mm -hmm. is broken by mine arms. So a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Read. Is there more now? That? That's it. Go back to first Samuel. Let's pick up where you left off at. And it was verse 45. Read that again. This thing is beautiful right here. This is some great history, brothers and sisters. This is some great history. What we reading right out of our own constitution. Come on. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Then said David to the Philistine, uh -huh. thou comest to me with a sword. Come on. And with a spear. Uh -huh. And with a shield. Read. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Read. The God of the armies of Israel, uh -huh. whom thou hast defied. Read. Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hands. And he was confident. He didn't say tomorrow. He said, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. Unlike Saul and his servants and his men who what? They were dismayed of the, of the battle and ran. David didn't have the spirit of fear. Read. Come on. And I will smite thee mm. and take thine head mm -hmm. from off thee. Excuse me, and take thy head from thee, mm -hmm. and I will give the I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day mm -hmm. unto the fowls of the air mm -hmm. and to the wild beasts of the earth. Come on, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Gave reverence to the Most High God once again. Read, and all this. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. The Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Come on. For the battle is the Lord. For the battle is the Lord. For the battle is the Lord. That's what we tell brothers. Don't fear. You hear other people poking fun at us, making videos, 10 part, 20 part series, calling us the F word, calling us, uh, saying we're gay, saying this, saying what. We sold out Rosicrucians. We invaded the Federal Reserve and we got coins and stuff like that. You heard, you heard Deacon Abiel breaking it down last night on Fix Your Face. Don't worry about that because every year, what are we doing? We're growing. We're growing. The most high is blessing. As long as we what? Keep the commandments of God in the faith of his son and put the most high first. The battle is of the Lord. The battle is of the Lord. Come on. 
For the battle is the Lord's, uh-huh. and he will give you into our hands. Mm, and he will give you uncircumcised heathens into our hands. This is beautiful right here, man. This is some this is some stuff right here. This is this is this is the daily bread. This is some coffee right here to wake you up. Smell the scriptures. This is beautiful stuff right here. Okay, let's get um First Samuel chapter 18. First Samuel chapter 18. Six. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 6 and 16. We're still examining um David right now, as opposed to Saul. Come on. 18 um, 18 and 6, yes, sir. The book of First Samuel, chapter 18, verse 6. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass as they came with David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine mm-hmm. that the woman came out of all the cities of Israel mm-hmm. singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets with joy mm-hmm. and with instruments of music. Come on. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands. Saul the king has slain his thousands. Come on. And David his ten thousands. And David his ten thousands. Come on. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And this saying from the woman displeased Saul. He was wroth. He was angry. Come on. And he said, mm-hmm. they have t- ascribed unto David ten thousands. Come on. And unto me have ascribed but thousands. Come on. And what can have and what can he have more but the kingdom? So you see the spirit that's on Saul right here is a spirit of jealousy, is a spirit of envy, is a spirit of him being wroth of anger. But David served in your house. David fought in the battle with you, not against you. He fought with you, not against you. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing when you observe other congregations. We're all trying to head towards the same place. In the book of Revelation, it didn't say uh, IUIC on this gate, another camp on this gate, another camp on the third gate. No, it was broken down into the tribes. We're all of the nation of Israel trying to get into one place. Same common enemy, all the other nations. So what is the hate about? Why are you wroth? Why are you angry? Why? Because of envy, because of hatred, and because of jealousy. Same thing that was going on with Saul. Read verse 8 again. Verse 8. And Saul was very wroth, Mm -hmm. and the saying displeased him. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mm -hmm. They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, Mm -hmm. and to me they have ascribed but thousands. Come on. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Give me wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse um, 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. And you're still holding 1 Samuel 18. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Mm-hmm. Neither will I go with... Con- yeah, verse 23. Neither will I go with consuming envy, mm-hmm. for, for such a man shall ne- have... It says, neither will I go with consuming envy. Come on. For such a man mm-hmm. shall have no fellowship with wisdom. So such a man will have no fellowship with wisdom. Wisdom is not going to dwell in an envious man. Why? Because that was the simplicity of Saul. Saul was simple in his folly. Too stupid to realize David is with you, not against you. This is a young man that was what? Good friends with your son, Jonathan. He is with you, not against you. The Philistines, you had a common enemy. But because of that envy, he didn't have enough wisdom in him to realize this, that David was a benefit. David was a benefit. Okay, read that again. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Mm -hmm. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Come on. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world. So the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world. Is that it on verse 23? Oh, yeah. Okay. Go back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 18, and you left off at verse 8. Read it again. Read it again. Come on. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 8. And Saul was very wroth, and a saying displeased him. And he said... They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. Mm -hmm. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Come on. 
And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. So from that day, he eyed him. He had an evil eye towards his brother from that day and forward. Read. And it came to pass on the morrow mm -hmm. that the evil spirit from God mm -hmm. came upon Saul. So he had time to meditate. Okay. Because they just came back from war. Went to sleep. And in the very next day he woke up. Who was on his brain? David. The same way with us. We travel. We do our things daily. We, we build exponential growth like the deacons say. Like we can see, obviously, right? Exponential growth in IUIC from day to day, from day to day, we receive what? Hate from other congregations. But are we not all on the same goal? Whether it's short term or long term, to what? Bring our people out of captivity, the elect of our people out of captivity, to what? Inherit the kingdom of heaven? Don't we have all the same goal? Um, day, day, many days of atonements go by. Nobody reached out. Nobody reached out to Bishop or to anybody like, hey, I have this problem with you. I got this. This is why. No. You know what the problem is? Because it's not a personal thing. A lot of these brothers don't know us. It's not a personal thing. What is it? It's envy and hatred. There's no fault. It's not something that he did to them personally. But it's doctrine. It's because we obey God rather than men. So now the spirit, the evil spirit is on many of these brothers. And they can't see it. They can't see it. So the Bible says, and it came to pass on the morrow. So he went to sleep with envy on the brain. Let's get that. He went to sleep with envy on the brain. Sirach chapter 40, 5 to 7. Sirach chapter 40, 5 to 7. He went to, instead of, instead of praying before sleep, most high, please take the spirit away from me. I got a spirit of envy on me. Please take that spirit away from me so I don't be envious towards David. Nope. He had hatred and envy towards David. And David was simply sent there to help him. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 5. Come on. Wrath and envy. Wrath, 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 wrath and envy. Same thing we read in verse 8. It says, and Saul was very wroth and the saying displeased him. Now in Sirach, it says what? Wrath and envy. Read. Trouble and unquietness. Uh-huh. Fear of death. Fear of death. Why? Because you're not walking in perfect love. You're not walking in perfect love. So there's a fear of death. There is a fear of death. Come on. And anger. Uh-huh. And strife. Come on. And in the time of rest upon his bed. And in the time of rest upon his bed. Same thing that happened to Saul. He had envy, wrath on him. And he went to sleep with it. Come on. His night sleep mm -hmm. do change his knowledge. And his night sleep do change his knowledge. That's why we read in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Envy, an envious body, wisdom cannot dwell inside of it. The knowledge that it that changed right there. Read that last part. Read that last part so I don't butcher it. His night sleep mm -hmm. do change his knowledge. And his night sleep that's filled of envy and all those evil attributes that we just read change his knowledge of God. Because that's what the knowledge is. The knowledge is the laws of God. How you react to your brother. How you deal with your brother. It changed his mind. And when he woke up the next morning, what happened? Verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10. Come on. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God. That the evil spirit from God. Come on. Came upon Saul. Read. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. Read. And David played with his hands mm -hmm. as at other times. Come on. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So he was sitting on the throne with a javelin. David is playing. And it's not just him and David there. There was people around with David right there. Javelin in his hand. What did he do with it? Read. And Saul cast the javelin. For he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. Mm. And David avoided out of his Presence twice. Presence. Read I'll it again. Read it. I'll read it. I jacked it up. Come on. Sorry. Verse 11. And Saul cast a javelin, for he said, 
I will smite David even to the wall with it. Come on. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And David avoided avoided out of his presence twice. So not only once, he tried to kill David two times. Twice. That's some envy for you, boy. That is some envy. That's some envy right there. Okay? Let's move on. Let's get uh first Samuel. Uh jump back to first Samuel chapter 16. And I want verse 7 to 12. Now we're going to go over the physical attributes. Physical attributes. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7 to 12. Come on. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, mm -hmm. nor or on his height of his stature, mm -hmm. because I have refused him. Mm -hmm. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. So David wasn't tall in stature. He wasn't, he wasn't some great, huge man, some big man like Saul was. We're going to read that in a, in a few minutes. So don't look on his stature. Don't look on the outward appearance, but look, in the, look at the inner man. Come on. For man looketh on the outward appearance. Read. But the Lord looketh on the heart. So you will be judged off of your character. Okay. Just like in our kind, we judge people off of the character, off of their works. Come on. Then Jesse called Abeniab and made him pass before Samuel. Come on. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Come on. Then Jesse made Sh Shammah. Shema. Then Jesse made Shema mm -hmm. to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Read. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. Come on. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Come on. And Samuel said unto Jesse, mm -hmm. Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the and he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. Come on. For we will not sit down till he come hither. So David was the youngest. Come on. And he sent and brought him in. Mm -hmm. Now he was ready and withal of a beautiful countenance mm -hmm. and goodly to look to. So he was ruddy. He was ruddy. He was ruddy. So those of you who are new, ruddy does not mean red. Okay. Because Esau, the so-called white man, tries to use this scripture to say David was a white man. But that is not true. Hold that. Get me the additions of Esther chapter 6 verse 5 in the Apocrypha. In the Apocrypha. Okay. King David was not a so-called white man. Many of you know, but those of you who are new, we want to go to the scripture to prove that what ruddy means. Okay. The additions of Esther chapter six, verse five. 15. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the additions of Esther in the Apocrypha mm -hmm. chapter 15 and verse five. Chapter 15. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And she was ruddy. And who? And she was ruddy. And she was ruddy. Who's this making reference to? Esther. Come on. Through the perfection of her beauty. Through the perfection of her beauty, meaning she had no blemishes. She had no black spots, black heads, or white heads, pimples, zits, whatever you want to call it, scars on the face. She was glowing. It was beautiful, brown, rich skin. Come on. And her countenance was cheerful. And her countenance was cheerful. Now, what tribe was Esther from? She was from the tribe of Benjamin. Who else is from the tribe of Benjamin? Paul, the apostle Paul in the New Testament. Paul was mistaken for what? An Egyptian, a black Egyptian. So this proves right there that ruddy does not mean white. Okay, ruddy does not mean white. It's, it means perfection of beauty. Okay, so David was a black man. Okay, go back to David. First Samuel chapter 16, verse um, 7. Where did you leave off at? Uh, you left off at verse 12. Yep. Come on. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 12. Come on. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance mm -hmm. and goodly to look to. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, mm -hmm. for this is he. Now get me first Timothy chapter four, verse 12. Because when you read this, Jesse, right here in verse 11, in first Samuel chapter 16, verse 11, 
um, it said, uh, and Samuel said unto Jesse, and hear all thy children. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. So Jesse didn't even call for David. Why? Because he was young. But let's listen to what the Bible says right here. First Timothy's four verse 12. The book of first Timothy chapter four and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise your youth. Let no man despise your youth. Come on. But be thou an example mm -hmm. of the believers. But you got to be an example of the believers. If you at a young age, these are for you young brothers coming up to be soldiers, to be officers. Some of you are young, but you got to lead by example, because a lot of times young people act immaturely. They do stupid things. Okay, follow the example of the deacons and the bishop, and you'll be all right. Come on. In word, in conversation, uh -huh. in charity. So you got to have good word, good conversation, and charity. Come on. In spirit, mm -hmm. in faith, in purity. In faith and purity. However, Romans chapter 12, 6 to 7, although you are young, Guess what? You still got to what? Wait on something. The Most High is going to explain it right here. Romans 12, 6 to 7. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, mm -hmm. whether prophecy, let us prophesy Come on. According, to the pro according to the proportion of faith. Come on. Or ministry. Or ministry. Or ministry. Or ministry. Come on. Let us wait on our ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Okay, that's for the young brothers in this truth. All right. Hey, I'm still a, a young brother in this truth. Okay, all of us. Okay, we're not on a level with uh, the bishop and deacons as far as the years and so forth. Nah, I mean, we're all still babies in this truth. But the Most High says to wait on your ministering. Wait on your ministering. But still, don't let a man despise your youth. Go to First Samuel chapter nine, verse two. So the Most High God told Samuel, "Look, I don't look at the outer appearance like men." OK, I look on the inward appearance. So David was young and he was ruddy. Now, let's get the outer characteristics of Saul. Get me. Um, what did I tell you to go? Get Yes. First Samuel nine and verse two. Come on. The book of first Samuel, chapter nine, verse two. Come on. And he had a son mm -hmm. whose name was Saul. This was Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Come on. A choice young man mm -hmm. and a goodly and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. Come on. From his shoulders. From his shoulders. Come on. And upward. And upward. Shoulders and upward. Come on. He was higher. He was what? Higher. Come on. Than any of the people. That's why. That's why he told Samuel what he told him. That's why God told Samuel what he told him. Don't look on the outer appearance. This man Saul was higher than the other people from the shoulders on up. He had what? Stature as far as height. David was a young man. David was a, the youngest of all the brothers. God says, I don't look at the outward appearance. I look at the inner appearance. Okay? Because look, he was higher and goodly amongst all the people, but what? He had doubt fear he was bashful and he didn't keep the commandments of the most high god he didn't keep the word of the lord when he was given specific instructions he was self-willed and he let the people move him he cared about what the people would think more than the most high god okay and that's attributes we're not supposed to have get me um where are we okay we left that give me first samuel 23 First Samuel chapter 23, we're going right back to David. So not only was David bold, rejoiced in the Lord, followed instructions, what did he do? He always inquired of the Lord. Even when he became kid, he inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. He gave the Most High God a reverence first and foremost. First Samuel 23, 2 to 4. First Samuel chapter 23, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, saying, mm -hmm. Shall I go and smite these Philistines? Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said unto David, mm -hmm. go and smite the Philistines. So notice what David did here. He asked the most high for direction. He asked the most high for direction. Come on. Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. Mm -hmm. And David's men said unto him, mm -hmm. behold, we be afraid here in Judah. Mm -hmm. How much more then if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? Okay, stop right there. Give me 2 Samuel 5 and 19. So there's a pattern here with David. He always inquired of the Lord. He was not self-willed. Brothers that are novices coming up, brothers that are young in this truth coming up, always ask for counsel. Don't do nothing without without counsel, okay? And always inquire of the Lord. You got to believe that the men over you inquire of the Lord. You got to believe that the deacons and bishop are moving in the right direction, all right? Or you can, you can see the fruits. You can see the fruits of, of their labors, okay? Come on. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 19. Mm-hmm. And David inquired of the Lord. And David did what? Inquired of the Lord. And David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. Even when he became king, he inquired of the Lord. Go ahead. Saying, mm -hmm. shall I go up to the Philistines? Mm -hmm. Wilt thou deliver then into mine hand? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto David, go up, uh -huh. for I will doubtless delivered the Philistine into thine hand. And there was no doubt there. Why? Because he inquired of the Lord and the Most High answered him. Get me Sirach chapter 2, 6 to 7. And the Most High tells us the same thing. He gives us the blueprint in Sirach chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Come on. The book of Sirach chapter 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Believe in him and he will help thee. Mm -hmm. Order thy way aright mm -hmm. and trust in him. Order thy way aright and trust in the most high God. Same thing David did. Why? Because he constantly went and inquired of the Lord. Is that it on verse 7? That was verse 6. Verse, verse six. 6. Come on. Verse 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Come on. And go not aside, lest he fall. Well, now, when you go aside, what are you doing? You're, you're um, leaning back on your own thoughts. Same thing Saul did when he went up against um, Agag, the Amalekites. God told him, look, I want you to kill this, all the city of Amalek right here. Kill Agag, kick all the cattle. Nope. He leaned upon the side and went after his own thoughts. And what happened? He was removed as king. He was overthrown and removed as king. God got rid of him. But in Sirach, it tells us to lean not upon our own thoughts. Don't move aside. Let's see what? Lest ye fall. Lest ye fall. Lest ye fall. Give me James chapter 4, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. I think I want you to start at verse 2. Let me hear it. Matter of fact, I'll get it with you. Yep. The book of James chapter 4, verse 2. Mm hmm. Ye lust and have not. Come on. Ye kill and desire to have mm -hmm. and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Come on. Because ye ask not. Read. Ye ask and receive not. Mm -hmm. Because ye ask amiss. You ask amiss. You're not asking for the betterment of the nation. You're asking for your own self, your own lust. Okay. David didn't roll like that. He inquired of the Lord to deliver the nation out of trouble. He did everything for the nation, not for his own fulfillment, his own lust. Read. That ye may consume it upon your lust. That ye may consume it upon your lust. That's why a lot of our prayers are not answered. God is not going to answer a lot of our prayers. Why? Because it's based on lust. It's based on what we want, not what we need. Bishop Kanai just taught, I think it was last week's Sabbath class about that, okay? Versus your wants and needs. Ask the Most High for your daily bread. What you need, not what you want, okay? Drop that. Let's go to 2 Samuel 12 and verse 1. Because although David, although David was a mighty man, guess what? He erred as well. He erred as well, right? He made mistakes, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David 
And he came unto him mm -hmm. and said unto him, there were two men in one city. Come on. The one rich and the other poor. This is after David committed adultery. Come on. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, mm -hmm. but the poor man had nothing mm -hmm. save one little ewe lamb, mm -hmm. which he had bought and nourished up. Mm -hmm. And it grew up together with him and with his children. Mm -hmm. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup. Come on. And lay in his bosom mm -hmm. and was unto him as a daughter. Mm -hmm. So Nathan or Nathan is giving him a similitude. Come on, an example. Come on. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. Mm -hmm. And he spared to take of his own flock mm -hmm. and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. Come on. But took the poor man's lamb mm -hmm. and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Read. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. So David was angry at what he was hearing from Nathan. Come on. And he said to Nathan, mm -hmm. as the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. Read. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing. Mm -hmm. And because he had no pity. Read. And Dave and Nathan said to David, uh huh. Thou art the man. Mm, he told David, you're that man. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Uh huh. I anointed thee king over Israel. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, uh -huh. and I gave thee thy master's house mm -hmm. and thy master's wives mm -hmm. into thy bosom. Come on. And I gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Uh -huh. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord mm -hmm. to do evil in his sight? Mm -hmm. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite mm -hmm. with the sword. So jump down to verse 13. Notice what happens with David right here. Verse 13. So Nathan didn't have to explain to things to him once or twice or three times. He only told him just one time, unlike in comparison to Saul. Remember Samuel and Saul? When Samuel went to Agag, I mean, not when Samuel went to Agag, when Samuel went to Saul about Agag, Saul had excuses. He said, no, the people came with the cattle. No, they came with Agag. And then he finally said, okay, I messed up. But after three, four, five times of getting checked, but notice what happened here with David. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Nathan. Come on. I have sinned against the Lord. Mm. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. Come on. And Nathan said unto David. Read. The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Why is that? Because he made haste to repent. There was no excuses. But when you compare it to Saul, his predecessor, look what happened. He had excuses. Many excuses. Okay. Get me um, Psalms. Get me Psalms 119, 58 to 60. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, mm -hmm. verse 58. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Come on. Be merciful unto me mm -hmm. according to thy word. Mm -hmm. I thought on my ways mm -hmm. and turned my and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. Come on. I made haste. I made haste. I made haste. Come on. And delay not to keep thy commandments. He repented quick. Nathan brought that to his ear. Nathan brought the judgments. He said, look, I, I repent. I've sinned. I'm sorry. Nathan said, the most high is going to put away the sin. Judgment is still going to come forth. But the Most High is going to put away that sin from amongst you. Unlike Saul, who was making excuses. Okay? We can't make excuses for our sins, brothers and sisters. Just repent. Just repent. Get me Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And this is why the Most High said this right here. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And when he had removed him, mm -hmm. he raised up unto them David mm -hmm. to be their king, mm -hmm. to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, mm -hmm. 
A man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. Is that it? Which shall fulfill all my will. Which shall fulfill all his will, meaning keep the commandments. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 13. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13. I learn diligently and do communicate her liberally. Mm -hmm. I do not hide her riches. Mm -hmm. For she is a treasure unto... Oh, it says, for she, for she is a treasure. What is the she that's a treasure? Jump back to the earlier chapter. <clears throat> I believe it's the last verse of the earlier chapter. Let me hear it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 25. Receive, therefore, instruction through my words, mm -hmm. and it shall do you good. Mm -hmm. So the instructions in the words, which is wisdom, is the same she in chapter 7. Go to verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. You want verse 7? Verse 13. Verse 13. Come on. I learn diligently and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches. Mm -hmm. For she is a treasure unto men. So she is a treasure unto men, meaning wisdom is a treasure unto men. Come on. That never faileth, mm -hmm. which they that use become the friends of God. And David was a friend of the Most High God because he had wisdom. He had wisdom. Okay, let's go back now um, to, uh, let's see what I want. Let's see what I write. Okay, so we're done with David. We're done with Saul and we're done with David. So how does the house of David and the spirit of David look today? Remember, you got to examine yourselves, right? We examined Saul. Now we're examining David. Okay. The house of David lays everything aside to pursue the most high God and his kingdom. They look to him for vision and strategy and guidance, not relying on their own thoughts OK, not relying on the thoughts of men or how they're perceived. They'll what? Keep the commandments of God no matter what. OK, um, when faced with increasing threats, anger, tribulation, trials, they don't bow to any pressure of popular opinion. So we're not changing the doctrine where yeah, sisters could wear pants or now nah, you don't got to wear fringes on all your garments, just your garment on the feast day. OK, no, we're not doing that. OK, we're not changing the doctrine for no man. OK, we're going to walk after the footsteps of our forefather, King David. Now let's get to Cain. Let's get to Cain. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. I want Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Okay. Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 4. So we examined the life of Saul. We examined David. Now we're going to go into um, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Okay, come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Mm hmm by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Abel offered a sacrifice unto God. Come on. A more excellent sacrifice a, than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Come on. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Come on. God testifying of his gifts. God testified of his gift. Where do we read about the uh, uh, testimonial? We read about it in the records of our forefathers. Not only in the book of Genesis, but it's rewritten in Hebrews chapter 11. And even the Most High, when he had to come on the scene, he told Cain, he told Cain, look, he was unsatisfied with his offering. But the offering of Abel, he was satisfied with it. Read that part again. Come on. By faith, Abel offered unto God mm -hmm. a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, mm -hmm. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Come on. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So why does it say by it being dead yet speaketh? By it being dead yet speaketh. Give me Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. 
Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. Now we know the blood the blood of the prophets still cries out to the most high unto this very day. We read about that in the book of Revelation. However, there's another meaning as well when it says by it still speaketh. Because how would we know about the example that Abel and the good works that he did? We read about it. We read about it. It was written down for us, passed through generations to generations, and we have it this time for comfort and an example. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Which had the golden censer mm -hmm. and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that the manna mm -hmm. and, uh, and Aaron's rod that, that budded. Mm -hmm and the tables of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the give me he no that's the wrong get me uh where is the one that talks about the testator let me find it yeah you got it Hebrews 9 and yes, Hebrews, I put the wrong scripture, I apologize. It was Hebrews 9 and verse, I want to uh, start at verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Come on. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions <laughs> that were under the first testament. Come on. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. For where a testament is, mm -hmm. there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Why is that? Because as long as he as long as he's alive, he can change. Their actions can change. So the death of the testator must happen. So once it happens, guess what is written down for us as an example? Hence the prophets, hence Christ, hence Abel. How do we know that Abel was um, killed unlawfully and he had good works? Because it was written in the book of Genesis. And then it's repeated in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and throughout other scriptures. I believe in Matthew 23, Christ speaks about Abel as well. Okay, read. Verse 17, mm -hmm. for a testament is a force after men are dead. So the testament is a force after men are dead. Come on. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it is of no strength mm -hmm. at all while the testator liveth. So why is it written all over the scriptures that Abel was faithful in all his works? Because he died doing the work. He was slaughtered for the work. Now we have that as an example in the testaments. Go back to um, Hebrews 11, verse 4 again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, mm -hmm. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, mm -hmm. God testifying of his gifts, mm -hmm. and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Yet still speaketh. Give me Psalms uh, 51. I want Psalms 51. Verse 16 to 17. Verse 16 to 17. Psalms 51, 16 to 17. Read. Psalms chapter 51, verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, mm -hmm. else will I give it. Mm -hmm. thou, des thou delightest not in burnt offering. Mm -hmm. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. A broken and a contrite heart, mm -hmm. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. So the Most High wants obedience. He wants obedience. And Abel was obedience. Like us today, when you, of course, I got to bring it back to this, compare the different congregations within the nation of Israel. Okay? We are keeping the commandments. That's why the Most High is allowing us, uh, is blessing us the way he is. We're not moving to the left. We're not moving to the right to appease no one. We're not doing that okay god requires obedience okay did you read up to verse 17 okay now let's go into the history a bit give me genesis chapter 4 genesis chapter 4 come on genesis chapter 4 1 through 5 the book of genesis chapter 4 verse 1 mm-hmm 
And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain hmm? and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Come on. And she again bare his brother Abel. Hmm? And Abel was a keeper of sheep. So Abel was a keeper of sheep. Come on. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain worked the ground. Come on. And in process of time, it came to pass. And in the process of time. So this is a big time period that passed. Okay. We don't know the time period. We don't know if it was a couple of months. We don't know if it was a year. We don't know if it was a couple of weeks. It just says in the process of time. Come on. It came to pass mm -hmm. that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground mm -hmm. an offering unto the Lord. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. Come on. And the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So why did the Most High have respect unto Abel and his offering? Jump back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Unto Adam also mm -hmm. and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. What is that? Animal sacrifice. That's where animal sacrifice was introduced. Okay, Adam and Eve did it, and guess what? Abel and Cain were present. They seen it. They seen them doing sacrifices. Okay, so this is something that was taught to the young men, to the sons. Read verse 4 again, chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, uh -huh. and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel, and to his offering read but unto Cain mm -hmm. and unto his offering mm -hmm. he had not respect mm -hmm. and Cain was very wroth uh -huh. and his countenance fell and now notice what it says in verse 2 it says Cain was a tiller of the ground so what do you think Cain bought he bought forth fruits he bought forth fruits vegetables cassava plantains apples the most high didn't want that the most high gave the order in genesis 3 verse 21 what to bring in verse 6 it said he was wroth he was wroth why because he was not accepted his offering was not accepted so instead of correcting himself and following the example of abel what did he do he ended up killing him we're gonna read that all right read verse 6 mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, mm -hmm. why art thou wroth? Why are you angry, Cain? Come on. And why is thy countenance fallen? Give me Sirach chapter 13, verse 25. Why is his countenance fallen? Why? Because he was mad at his brother. Come on. He was mad at his brother. Come on. Sirach chapter 13, verse 25. Mm -hmm. The heart of a man changeth his countenance. The heart of a man, the mind of a man changeth his countenance. When you have envy and jealousy, it changes your countenance. Okay, it changes your look. You could see that thing on a brother. You could see that thing on a man's face. It changes his countenance. Come on. Whether it be for good mm -hmm. or evil. Whether it be for good or evil. Come on, is that it? And a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. And a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. All right. So he, if he was in the right, he would have had a cheerful countenance. But he was in the wrong. That's why he was wroth and he had an evil countenance on him. Go back to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 6. Come on. Genesis chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Mm -hmm. And why is thy countenance fallen? Mm -hmm. If thou doest well, mm -hmm. shalt thou not be accepted? Uh -huh, come on. And if thou doest not well, uh -huh. sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door if you don't do well. Now get me uh, Wisdom of Solomon. I want Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. One to three. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse one. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first formed father. Who is the she here that preserved the first formed father? Read the chapter before the last verse. Wisdom of Solomon, nine, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth mm -hmm. were reformed. Mm -hmm. And men were taught the things mm -hmm. that are pleasing unto thee. And were saved through wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is the she in chapter 10. Go back to chapter 10, verse 1. 
chapter 10, verse 1. Mm-hmm. She preserved the first. Wisdom vo- preserved the first formed father. Come on. Of the world. Come on. That was created alone mm-hmm. and brought him out of his fall. Come on. That's going into Adam. Come on. And gave him power to rule all things. Adam was a god on earth. Come on. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger. Who is the unrighteous that went away from her? The her is that she in verse one, which is wisdom. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger. Come on. He perished. Also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. So this is going into Cain where he murdered his brother. You could take it with you. Yeah, take it with you. Okay. So it says, but when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. Let's go back to Genesis for that. Let's go back to what was going on. What was going on? What was going on with Cain and Abel? Is it something that they just came? He offered an offering. Abel offered an offering. He got mad and killed him the next day. No, there was more than that. There was more than that. We're going to get into it. Get me um, verse 8. Was a, um, excuse me. Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. Mm-hmm. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. What do you think they were discussing? Because remember, Abel is a prophet. Abel was a prophet. Abel was about God's laws. Abel knew God's laws. So you don't think he was trying to teach Cain God's laws? Like, yo, bro, you offered the wrong thing. This is how you do it. Follow my example so you could be accepted. Cain wasn't trying to hear that. That's why I said the unrighteous went away from wisdom. If all he had to do was just look at the example, follow what God said. He didn't want to do that. Get me uh, Matthew 23, because I said Abel was a prophet. Let's prove it. Matthew 23, verse 35, and then I want verse 37. We're going to come right back to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 8. Come on. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth Mm -hmm. from the blood of righteous Abel. From the blood of righteous Abel. Come on. Unto the blood of Zacharias. Unto the blood of Zacharias. Who was Christ speaking to? He was speaking to the wicked Pharisees. He says the blood of righteous Abel, the blood of Zacharias. Come on. Son of Barachias. Uh Uh-huh. Whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Come on. Verily I say unto you, mm-hmm. all these things shall come upon this generation. Come on. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh-huh. thou that killest the prophets. Thou that killest the prophets. Abel was mentioned in verse 35. So Abel was a prophet. He was about God's laws. Go back to Genesis 4 verse 8. So it says Cain talked with Abel, his brother. What do you think he was talking about? The moon and the stars? There had to be some correction there. For him to get so angry with his brother to put him to death. That's why these camps hate when we correct them. Us keeping the scriptures is a is a is like a, a, a nuisance to them. That's why they come in that murder, that hatred, that hatred spirit where they can make countless videos about another man you never met, another man you don't know. That is hatred, that is envy, that, that's rottenness to the bone. That's the same thing that was going on with Cain right here. Read. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Come on. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. After so much talking, it came to pass. Come on. When they were in the field. Come on. That Cain rose up Uh against Abel, Uh his brother. Come on. And slew him. And slew him. And slew him. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, mm-hmm. where is Abel, thy brother? Come on. And look how he answered the most High. Come on. And he said, I know not. Uh-huh. Am I my brother's keeper? Wicked as hell. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Come on. Uh, get me um, what I want. There's something that I wanted in the earlier chapter. Get me. Oh, get me Adam. Get me Adam. Get me Adam, uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17. I want the curse on Adam and his descendants. 
Yes, 3, 17 and 18. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, mm -hmm. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree mm -hmm. of which I commanded thee, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, because at that time things were growing at a phenomenal rate, fast rate. You didn't have to aggregate the land, okay? So it says, cursed be the ground for thy sake. Come on. In sorrow shalt thou eat of all, shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In sorrow, meaning laborious work laborious work to get the fruits and the and the food from out of the ground okay it would take hard work come on thorns also and thistles Thor thorns also and thistles come on shall it bring forth to thee uh-huh and thou shalt eat the herb of the field so in order to eat the herb of the field you have to what? You're going to plow the ground in sorrow. You're going to reap the fruits in sorrow. And then guess what? Sometimes it's not even going to push out fruits. You're going to get thorns and thistles. So this was put upon Adam. But now when you jump to chapter 4 and verse 2, look what it says about Cain. Genesis chapter 4 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. Uh -huh. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a t he had to till that ground, that cursed ground that had thorns and thistles. So when he brought that fruit to the Most High for offering, and the Most High said, nah, I don't want that crap. I wanted sheep. The same thing that I gave your forefathers, forefathers your father, not your forefather, your father and mother in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. So Cain worked hard for that thing. Cain worked hard for that thing. Okay, and he was wroth. But the Most High, the Most High, that's not what he asked for. The Most High asked for sheep. Cain was a tiller on the ground. Now, look at the punishment. Now it gets even worse. It was bad for Adam. It was bad for Adam to reap the benefits of the land. Right? He had to what? Have laborious work with thorns and, th and thistles, right? Read verse, uh, where is it? Read uh, verse... Um, Verse 12, chapter 4 and verse 12. Genesis chapter 4, verse 12. Look what happened to Cain. When thou tillest the ground, uh -huh. it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Mm. Look what it said right here. Now he had a double dose. Now it got even worse. You had thorns and thistles coming out from the ground. And Cain was already a tiller of the ground. Now the most I said, now I'm going to give you a double dose of that. Now you're going to have little bitty grapes and cranberries and little small grapes and so forth. God says, when you till the ground, Cain is not going to yield unto you her strength. So Cain was mad as hell. Cain was mad as hell. But guess what? He was walking disobedient. He was not keeping the commandments of the Lord. He was another one outside of Saul that was self will. Get me Ecclesiastes 12 verse 11. So when Cain talked with Abel, who had a righteous sacrifice, a righteous gift for the Most High, look what happened. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 11. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The words of the wise mm -hmm. are as gold. Golds. I'll read it again. Wisdom of, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 11. Uh -huh. The words of the wise are as golds. The words of the wise are as golds. Who was wise? Abel was wise. There are as golds. A golds is an instrument that you use to direct oxen. And it has a sickle. It has a sickle at the end of it. That's why the Most High Christ said what? He said, we told Paul, why do you kick against the pricks? Okay, the pricks is a gold that you use to direct them. Don't go to your left. Don't go to your right. But the ox, being the dumb animal that it is, it keeps kicking against the pricks. It might get pricked once. You think it'll learn its lesson? No. It get pricked the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Okay, it's the same thing as the words of the wise. It says the words of the wise are as what? Or as golds. Or as golds. It's meant to what? Direct you in the right path. Okay, come on. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. To hold you upright, come on. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from one shepherd. So Abel, Abel was that wise, okay? And right here in verse 8, read it again. Chapter 4, verse 8, come on. 
Genesis chapter 4 and verse 8. Uh huh. And Cain talked with Abel, and, his brother. And, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, who was a prophet. So he had to be correct in Cain. He had to tell Cain, look, bro, you went off for that with them fruits and vegetables. Look what the Most High showed our, fo our father, Adam and Eve. He gave them the right coats of skins to sacrifice, which was animals. So there had to be some correction going on. And what did he slew him? He had the devil on him. He had the devil on him. And that's still going on in the nation of Israel until this very day. The words of the wise are as of golds. OK, jump to um, Proverbs 27 and verse four. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse four. We're almost done. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4. Come on. Wrath is cruel. Wrath is what? Cruel. Wrath is cruel. We see it. We see it all across the internet, brothers. Wrath is cruel. People will make 20-part videos talking about Illuminati sold out, trying to move the minds of the people. They did this. They got this person killed. Oh, they taking money. Oh, they blah, 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 blah. All these just ridiculous, ridiculous slander. Wrath is cruel. Come on. And anger is outrageous. And anger is outrageous. But what does it say about envy? Come on. But who is able to stand before envy? But who is able to stand before envy? Nobody can stand before envy. Who is able to stand before envy? Abel wasn't able to stand before envy. Okay? Who is able to stand before envy? Give me 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. So we got to really examine ourselves, brothers, in the spirit that we roll in. OK, first John, chapter three, verse 15. Come on. First John, chapter three, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So you don't got to literally kill your brother. You don't got to do that. But if you have hatred for your brother, you already what you already classified as a murderer. And that was the spirit on Cain. That was the spirit on Saul. Okay, it was in them and they did not repent of it. So we got to what? Examine ourselves. Don't let that bitterness that's in us rise itself and increase itself. Whatever ought we have with our brothers and sisters, go to them. That's what Matthew 18 is for. The Bible says he that hateth his brother is a murderer. Come on. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer have eternal life abiding in him. Come on. That's it. Last scripture. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Come on. Galatians 5, 14 to 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Come on. Even in this, mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love your neighbor, which is the children of thy people, as yourself. Okay, you don't want somebody being envious of you. Don't be envious of others. You don't want to have, you don't want somebody to hate you. Don't hate others. Read. But... If ye bite and devour one another. And that's what you see going on within the nation of Israel. Okay. Camps biting and devouring each other. Come on. Take heed that ye be not consumed mm -hmm. one of another. So don't take heed that you be not consumed one of another. What consumes you? The spirit of envy, which leads to hatred and murder. Read. You're reading to 16. Verse 16. Come on. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, brothers and sisters. Come on. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the commandments of God and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. Like Cain fulfilled the lust of the flesh and so did Saul. All right. So these are examples in the Bible, what to follow and what not to follow. So let's continue to examine ourselves, brothers and sisters in this walk and most high in Christ blessed to you all. Happy Sabbath. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.